Jesus began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, set a hedge around it, dug a pit for the wine press, built a tower, let it out to tenants, and went into another country. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent to them another servant, and they wounded him in the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and him they killed. And so with many others, some they beat and some they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. They took him and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read the scripture? The very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they tried to arrest him, but feared the multitude for they perceived that he had told the parable against them. So they left him and went away. And they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to entrap him in his talk. Teacher, we know that you are true and care for no man, for you do not regard the position of men, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, Jesus said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a coin, and let me look at it. Whose likeness and inscription is this? Caesar's. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were amazed at him. Sadducees came to him, who say that there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife, but leaves no child, the man must take the wife and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and when he died, left no children. And the second took her and died, leaving no children. And the third likewise and the seven left no children. Last of all, the woman also died. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven had her as wife. Is not this why you are wrong? That you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the first of all? The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. You are right, teacher. 
You have truly said that he is one and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. As Jesus taught in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, inspired by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I put thy enemies under thy feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how is he his son? And the great throng heard him gladly. Beware of the scribes who like to go about in long robes and to have salutations in the marketplaces and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the multitude putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two copper coins which make a penny. Jesus called his disciples to him. Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, her whole living. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us. When will this be? And what will be the sign when these things are all to be accomplished? Take heed, and no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. But take heed to yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear testimony before them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. When they bring you to trial and deliver you up, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver up brother to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When you see the desolating sacrilege set up where it ought not to be, let the listener understand. Then, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop 
not go down nor enter his house to take anything away and let him who is in the field not turn back to take his mantle alas for those who are with child and for those who give suck in those days pray that it may not happen in winter for in those days there will be such tribulation as has not been from the beginning of the creation which god created until now and never will be and if the lord had not shortened the days no human being would be saved but for the sake of the elect whom he chose he shortened the days then if anyone says to you look here is the christ or look there he is do not believe it false christs and false prophets will arise and show signs and wonders to lead astray if possible the elect but take heed i have told you all things beforehand in those days after that tribulation the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven from the fig tree learn its lesson as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves you know that summer is near so also when you see these things taking place you know that he is near at the very gates truly i say to you this generation will not pass away before all these things take place heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away but of that day or that hour no one knows not even the angels in heaven nor the son but only the father take heed watch and pray for you do not know when the time will come it is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch watch therefore for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning lest he come suddenly and find you asleep and what i say to you i say to all watch it was now two days before the passover and the feast of unleavened bread and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest jesus by stealth and kill him for they said not during the feast lest there be a tumult of the people while jesus was at bethany in the house of simon the leper as he sat at the table a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard very costly and she broke the flask and poured it over his head but there were some who said to themselves indignantly why was the ointment thus wasted for this ointment might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor and they reproached her but jesus said let her alone why do you trouble her <laughs> she has done a beautiful thing to me for you always have the poor with you and whenever you will you can do good to them but you will not always have me she has done what she could she has anointed my body beforehand for burying and truly i say to you wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world 
what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And Judas sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the householder, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There, prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. As they were at table eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. As they were eating, he took bread and blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Take, this is my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though they all fall away, I will not. Truly, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. They went to a place which was called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, all things are possible to thee. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he came and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray. 
pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, <laughs> saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. They did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign. The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to Jesus at once. Master. And he kissed him. They laid hands on Jesus and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. A young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away, naked. They led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now, the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many bore false witness against him, and their witness did not agree. Some stood up and bore false witness against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet not even so did their testimony agree. The high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus was silent and made no answer. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his garments. Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him. <laughs> Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. As Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the maids of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him. You also were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it. I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, again the bystanders said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. Peter remembered, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes 
and the whole council held a consultation, and they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now, at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. The crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he was wont to do for them. He answered them. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And what shall I do with the man whom you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him! Crucify him! What? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! So, Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium. And they called together the whole battalion. They clothed him in a purple cloak, and plating a crown of thorns, they put it on him. They began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed, and spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. When they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him and they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. As they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. <laughs> divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads. Aha! Uh -huh. You! who would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes. He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. When the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. One ran, and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. <laughs> and Jesus uttered a loud cry. And breathed his last. And when 
the centurion who stood facing him saw that he thus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joses, and Salome who, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered to him and also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Joseph brought a linen shroud, and taking Jesus down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, saw where he was laid. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. They were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? Looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. As he told you, and they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him, as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that Jesus was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they sat at table, and he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that attended it. Amen.